Thanks, Logan. Well, Logan, listen to this. The Connecticut Poison Control Center says there have been 41 reported cases of carbon monoxide poisoning in the wake of Hurricane Sandy. Most of those problems stem from incorrectly using a generator. This morning, we're joined by Amy Hanoyan Fontana, who is an education specialist there. Amy, thanks for being with us. So, 41 cases in just the last few days. Are these, are most of them from people using genera generators incorrectly? Yes, most of the CO cases that we're seeing in these last few days are from using generators incorrectly. People are putting them in their basements, in their garages. Um, sometimes they do have them outside, as they should properly do. I thought some people put them on their porch but it's still too close even on the ground it's right. too close still to too the house. close to the house we recommend at least 20 feet from the house and away from any open doors or windows so if you have that generator outside of your window and you have the window open a crack mm -hmm. an inch to let the cords in mm -hmm. you've got to seal that crack somehow move right. that generator further away right now there's an easy way to prevent this from happening have a CO detector absolutely right? unfortunately it's not law to have a CO detector it is law to have a smoke detector but you can pick one up there fairly and expect it, uh, uh, inexpensive any hardware store Home Depot Lowe's. Yes, we want to make sure people know that there's a difference between smoke detectors mm -hmm. and carbon monoxide detectors. You can't Those get are... them combined in the two but continue that yes. it's important to have them both. It's important to have them both. There are combo units, but it's important to have them both. The Poison Center recommends that you have a plug-in CO detector with a battery backup. That means it works on electricity, but when the power goes off, you have the batteries, and that's it also works when the power's off. We also recommend that you buy extra batteries for that CO detector so that when we have a prolonged power outage, that will keep working for you. Mm -hmm. Now, what, does someone, what should someone do if their CO detector does go off? Well, if there's CO detector goes off, we want them to get out of the house, and if they're having symptoms, of course, call 911 from a neighbor's phone or a cell phone. Um, if they're not having symptoms, they can call the Poison Center at 1-800-222-1222. That will connect you to the 24-hour hotline at the Poison Center. And probably, you know, the best place to put the CO detectors are near the sleeping areas. So mm -hmm. if you have one, put it near or just outside your sleeping areas, because when you're asleep at night, you're much less likely to notice any kind of ill-feeling symptoms from carbon monoxide. Right. Well, let's talk about the symptoms now because typically you can get a headache, but how do you determine if it's a headache from CO poisoning or just a regular run-of-the-mill headache Okay. from all the stress that people are dealing right. with? Right. <laughs> That's understandable. Uh, so what, what we're going to look for is families that have symptoms all at the same time. You know, when you get a virus or you get ill, a lot of times one family member gets sick, then a few days later the next family member gets sick and down the line and so forth. With carbon monoxide poisoning, many times we see all family members getting some kind of symptoms. Usually they're having headaches, maybe they're dizzy, feeling fatigued or weak, or some kind of confused thinking. That can also lead to more dramatic symptoms like um, being unconscious, um, a coma, and ultimately it could result in death. So one uh, thing to keep in mind is everyone starts to feel the same symptoms at the same time. At the That's same certainly time. a red flag. Okay, so what are the treatments for CO poisoning? So for carbon monoxide poisoning, we want to make sure that person gets into the hospital. Uh, we want to make sure that they get oxygen, high flow oxygen therapy with a mask um, over their face and nose. And, uh, you know, we want to make sure that the doctor calls the poison center and gets, you know, further treatment recommendations. And how long does the treatment go for? Can it go for a couple days? It, it really depends on so many variables, depending on how much CO people have gotten into, you know, how, how much exposure. Yes, if it's acute, if it's chronic. Mm -hmm. And every case is, you know, different in tailored. All right, Amy Hanoi and Fontana, thanks so much for being with us. You're welcome. Great tips.